Welcome to Perth's Wanneroo Park Raceway and round three of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. A series that has been dominated totally by Jim Richards, Mark Scaife and Nissan in particular. Well, to you Holden, Ford and BMW devotees hoping for something just a little different here today, your prayers have been answered. Four times Australian champ Dick Johnson has pole position in the Ford Cosworth and sharing the front row with him, Holden's win Percy. What a race it promises to be. Not the happiest of days for Nissan yesterday. Some violent understeer problems. Here was Jimmy Richards in the morning session going straight ahead. Tried to pull the car up. Then in the uh, later session in the afternoon, Mark Scaife took about understeer and oversteer. Mark took it down to the sand trap in the bottom turn. Then this morning, of course, John Bow blowing a turbo. A lot of work for the Dick Johnson team with their second car. It will start from the back of the field today. Dick off the front and John Bow starting off the back line in company with Larry Perkins. But boy, really did cause a bushfire alert. We're ready to go racing round number three of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. Ford's Dick Johnson, Holden's Win Percy are about to go at it. And they're racing Johnson, a beautiful start, and Mark Scaife down the outside in the Nissan. Jimmy Richards trying to get up there, Tony Longhurst wasn't on the inside, but it'll be Johnson into the first turn, and maybe that's Scaife up into second. Very, very tight running in the turn as they work their way up towards the S's, and it's Johnson. Mark Scaife up smartly, win Percy, then Jimmy Richards. So Johnson's plan in this race is to get away from the pack and to do a pit stop on lap number 20. Running on softer compound tyres, he hopes he can spring a surprise on the Sierra set. And again, it's good afternoon to Neil Crompton, to Mark Osler. Dick Johnson here sprinting away, car 17. This is the plan, but look at Scape, a fantastic start off the second row of the grid. Launched into second position, he's going to push Johnson hard, but look at Percy, bogged down a little bit on the uh, start as well, but he's right up there in third. As they head down to the pitch break. There's Seaton coming down again, keeping the pressure on uh, Tony Longhurst. There's Peter Brock, the 05 Mobile VN Commodore. We take Jim Richards Nissan race cam, and we've also got a race cam riding with Peter Brock here today, so we believe we've got the front half of the field covered fairly well. Here, Brocky doing a bit of heavy breathing there as he works the Commodore fairly hard, trying to stay in touch here with Glenn Seaton. Johnson still opening that gap just a little. Mark Scaife unable to run away from the clutches of Wynn Percy. Fred Gibson said this morning that um, you know, they're very worried. They've been to Lakeside and tested, and the BMW is well and truly their match there. And I still think that uh, we're going to see something pretty exciting from that little yellow car in the background there in the coming 40 minutes. As he's getting a little closer to the tail of Jim Richards. Richards now sitting and making life fairly uncomfortable for one win Percy as we take Nissan race car coming up through the S's heading to the uh, left hander of the shell sweeper Johnson still yeah the gap looks about the same visually it, uh, there's not too much in it but I think Jim is getting all over the tail now of um, win Percy may even dive to the inside here on the entrance to cold corner fairly close and just finds a little opening not much in it let me tell you but a beautiful pass there from uh, Jimmy Richards. Look at Longhurst. And Longhurst is in this. And he comes ranging up on the outside. The V8's got a bit too much grunt to the top of the hill. Gee, this is a pretty Watch good under brakes. Here he comes. Darts straight down the inside. Wind was able to cover the ground at the very last minute, but uh, the BMW's braking performance is outstanding. Dick Johnson, you're working pretty hard at the wheel there as we take Dunlop Race Cab. Is the strategy going to work? Oh, God only knows, mate. Hey, it's got more pops than a lollipop shop at the moment, but it's just a gamble, Mike. We're just going to see what how it pans out in the end. What did you hope to have over the two Nissans when you pull in for your pit stop? Well, the way this thing's going at the moment, uh, I don't think that'll happen. Yeah. You have got to do a pit stop, Dick. There's no way you can go all the way. No, mate, she's just sort of... You do this to me, Mike. I don't know how you do it. I Stop. haven't. Yeah, you have. Oh, mate, I've given you the kiss of death again. <laughs> I'm sorry about no. that. No, that's all right. It's just the way it is. Just the way it is, pal. Well, you can see the advantage of race cam. No sooner talking to Dick Johnson and the, uh, the engine's gone pop. Dick has gone to the pits. His chance of winning round three today have gone completely, and we now have a Nissan 1-2 set up with, of course, uh, Wynn Percy uh, chasing hard and the Holden number 16 VN Commodore. 
and we all suggest that maybe Tony Longhurst could be the sleeper in this race a little later on as he wears them down. And this dice continues between Brocky and Alan Jones. Jones going down on the inside to take that spot away. Well, Peter's giving Alan uh, heaps of room there. He probably realises that he's fighting a losing battle under brakes, but he's got what it takes in a straight line. Um, Peter, uh, there's been real difficulty trying to get this car to balance the way you want it to. Are you making any progress? I sort of want to bond a bit here, but I can't pressure him enough at the moment because, for instance, where I'm right now, if I accelerate too hard, the left-hand rear is just wants to skate out. So. Hello? That doesn't sound too Hello, good. we've just lost the power. Well, I'll let you go back to work. Well, that's... Uh, Peter was looking across at the... the uh, switching in the middle of the car and where he's got a couple of alternative fuel pumps and the thing just started to snatch and carry on. It's making a dreadful noise as it goes past our commentary point. So the first reaction for him to do then was to shut down the existing pump and switch another on but uh, maybe he's got more problems with just fuel pumps. I'm glad we haven't got 10 race cams today. I think we've put the muckers on just about everyone yeah. so far that we talked to. So the Nissans are still maintaining their consistency and we've still got uh, Jim Richards hard on the heels of Mark, but uh, boy, Wynn is fighting uh, one heck of a battle here at the moment with Tony who's monstering him left, right and centre in all the spots that you'd predict the BMW would be good. And then this happens, the 520 odd horsepower of the hold leap away from the BMW in a straight line. And then back comes Tony again under brakes. And boy, doesn't he push it hard. Oh, and Percy runs wide. How quick was that? Down the inside, look for Percy to come fighting back, but he won't get Longhurst before the next right-hander. That now pole vaults Tony Longhurst up into third behind the two Nissan, Scaife and Jimmy Richards. And that happened ever so quickly. Sorry to interrupt, Mike. I have a feeling that Wynn's got a flat tyre or some, something of that nature. Um, the car just looked very unstable when we could see that shot in the cockpit a few minutes ago. And uh, wouldn't surprise me at all if Wynn had to make a pit stop. Standing with me is Dick Johnson. And Dick, we seem to put the race cam kiss of death on you again. What happened to the 17 car? Well, everything was going to plan there early in the race and then uh, the old engine's a bit tired. It really should have been changed before this race, but uh, we had a couple of problems earlier in the week and we ran out of engine, so uh, it ran a bit too long. And uh, towards the end, it just started getting worse and worse and rather than just throw away $30,000, I thought I'd stop. OK, Dick Johnson, thanks very much. Not a good weekend for the Shell team, Mike. No, certainly not, Mark. And we've noticed when Percy come in, you might like to check that situation out. We thought he may have... Uh, had a deflating tyre on the uh, the Holden in the last lap, and that's the reason he's in. But you can check that out for us as we follow the two Nissan GTRs. It was very much a guesstimation on my part. You shouldn't speculate, I suppose, but there was certainly a real instability in the car, and it just... Uh, and he got him so quickly as well. Yeah, the thing just wobbled and lurched, so uh, the team are having a look under there at the moment. Not a lot of urgency, though, and I think Wynn's got his helmet off, so it's game, set and match for Holden Race Team. And uh, Larry Perkins is also coming to the pits. Gee, you wouldn't want to be in a Holden today. The order at this stage is still Nissan 1-2 with Tony Longhurst back in third. And I would think that uh, Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson Sierra would be fourth. And probably Alan Jones up at the fifth spot. And uh, Brock's also decided to give the game away in the 0-5 car. It's astonishing because the strength of the Holden has always been... Uh, unbelievable reliability and suddenly this weekend for no apparent reason the, these cars are giving trouble i think larry's stop was merely for tires so the number 11 mobile car continues there certainly aren't any uh, team orders as to uh, who runs first and second they race for it and jim uh, was thinking about maybe a run down the inside but uh, the bottom turn coming up last turn now as they come out Headed towards the chequered flag and chalk up another 1-2 to Nissan. This time it's Mark Scaife who takes the victory. Second place will go to Jimmy Richards. And back about 12 or 14 seconds behind them, Tony Longhurst in the Benson and Hedges. BMW will be next in to pick up third place. His fourth will go to Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Ford Sierra. And fifth to Alan Jones in the number 20 
B and H car. And the winner, the first time he's won an Australian Touring Car Championship round. Fabulous drive, Mark. Everybody was very pleased for you. You must be thrilled. Thanks, Crumbo. Yeah, it was very good. I'd, I'd just like to thank Nissan for their efforts because uh, the car doesn't suit the circuit overly well and uh, the boys worked very, very hard through the week to make it a good package and the car was fantastic. Mark Scaife, the winner of this third round, as I say, a tremendous effort on everybody's part.